Welcome to the 19th edition of the International Annual Beverly Hills Film Festival here at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Beverly Hills, Hollywood, two magic worlds all together tonight. The red carpet behind just started. This is a very special, very special festival. It is dedicated to showcase and promote non-studio films to the entertainment industry. So stay with us, you and me, the red carpet right now. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Living Legend Award. The most important word is living, right? Yes. <laughs> and you get an award for that. Yeah. And I want to ask you, when, when someone calls you a legend for everything that you've been accomplished, how do you deal with it when you go home? Does I, it change something? I, I know better. I know, I know better. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is it's not, you know, nobody's going to remember me, you know, 20 years from now or 10 years after I'm gone. <clears throat> But they'll remember the films. Can and I name a few? One Flew Over a Cuckoo's Nest, Apocalypse Now, Rocky. Amadeus, Silence of the Lambs. Shutter Island. Shutter Island, Black Swan. So these movies in 50 years, 80 years, it's like the, the classic from uh, 80 years ago, right? So people well, you know, will remember I mean, the movies. Yeah. I mean, they'll, they, hopefully they'll be classics. You know, those films stay forever. As I said, they will stay, I won't. You know, How do you explain that a move, some movies stay forever, some songs stay forever? I don't know, they, they withstand the test of time and that that's really good. You know, that, usually, usually when the movie gets an Academy Award, like it's been the case for many of your movies, that's the trademark, that's the stamp that is going to stay well, for a long, long time. That, that's going to be interesting because it's uh, the question about whether, um, you know, films that are not only in the theaters, but there's obviously changes coming. I work in, in every venue, you know. I mean, I don't decide whether something becomes television or a movie. I mean, I know that if something's more than two and a half hours or three hours, I mean, I've made movies that are three hours. And, that, um, you know, it, by definition, if it goes into theater, then it's, it's a movie. That's been the case. That is not necessarily the case anymore. And a non-studio movie, would you say that there is more freedom? Uh, since there's less budget, they have to work faster? Uh, in some cases, people can work faster. But it's not how fast you work, it's how good the film is. Congratulations again. Is it the first time you come to this festival? Uh, first time at this festival, yes, absolutely. What? Really awesome. Yeah, it's based on a family. So we, we basically uh, really delve into the loyalty aspect of what, it's, what it is in the Mafia, uh, particularly in the family unit. So uh, I play uh, the youngest son of a Don. And Chaz Palminteri plays my older brother, who is a really made man, and I really want to get to where he is. But I'm sort of the black sheep of the family, struggling to get to where he is. And so it's basically um, me and my wife's trials and tribulations to get where we need to be, uh, where, where actually Chaz is and where the Don is, who is our father. It's like uh, Shakespeare with the Mafia. And it's t uh, taking place... Greek tragedy. And it's taking place in 2000, I mean, takes nowadays? Place, takes place now, yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, you know, take it as a compliment. I don't have my glasses and I have a heavy myopia. Okay. From far away, I thought you were Lenny Kravitz. Ah! Oh, you know. <laughs> Everybody keeps saying that. I keep telling Lenny, he needs to change something, man. <laughs> I'm sure people are telling him that he looks like you. That's what I keep telling him. <laughs> Tell me about the movie. The film, In God I Trust, it follows three characters and three stories that all end up in a small northern Idaho town, and it deals with racism, guns, and religion in the U.S. Racism and religion. Wow, 2019. Just reflecting how the modern-day society is right now in America. Yes. And is it an optimistic or pessimistic uh, picture of the situation? I think it's it's half and half, you know, it, it leaves it up to the viewer to, and whether or not he wants to be optimistic about everything or not, you know? And we're wishing you all the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you. much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.